some games seem to have everything going against them, and Dead Island 2 is one of those games. To understand this, just trace the timeline and the number of developers that tried to release this seemingly cursed sequel. The original Dead Island, originally developed by Techland, was released in 2011, but after disagreements with the publisher of the first game, Techland abandoned plans for a sequel and created a new IP involving zombies, Dying Light. Deep Silver, the publisher of the first game, then tasked Jaeger, developers of Spec Ops The Line, to develop Dead Island 2. It didn't work out. After a while, the responsibility was transferred to Sumo Digital, known for games like Sackboy. Guess what? It didn't work out either. The project was then transferred to an internal studio of Deep Silver, Deep Silver Dam Buster, originally known as Free Radical Design, and finally, in 2023, 12 years after the original and 3 studios later, Dead Island 2 is going to be released. I trace this entire timeline because, looking at all these chaos and changes, it's easy to think that Dead Island 2 would never succeed. But after playing for over 30 hours and finishing the game, it's hard to believe that not only did it work out, but I actually found Dead Island 2 to be very, very good. You are one of the lucky people who managed to get on a plane to escape a zombie-infested Los Angeles. But, well, this is a zombie game, so things couldn't just go smoothly, right? Unfortunately, someone infected is on the plane, and without even having time to rest in your seat, problems arise before the airplane even leaves the city. Here, in the midst of the crash, Dead Island 2 allows you to choose one of six characters, each with their own personality and some unique passive talents. And after a brief introduction that ends with our protagonist infected, that Island 2 begins. Uh. <sighs> that Island 2 is recognizable to anyone who played the first one, even after so long, as it focused on similar aspects that made the original successful, a first-person game with a focus on brutal melee combat, detailed and absolutely horrendous zombies, a variety of customizable and absurd weapons and somewhat questionable humor. But I would say that, although it's not a risky sequel, it certainly does all of this much better. This is largely due to what I would say is the main and omnipresent element of the game, combat. Dead Island 2 is surprisingly extremely polished and detailed in all its aspects, from its visuals that shine in the animations and details of the supporting characters or the zombies you will be tearing apart, to the diverse environments you visit in your bloody misadventures through Los Angeles, but it's evident that a great focus was placed on what you will be spending most of your time doing, killing zombies. This is noticeable in everything related to combat, the sound and visual feedback of each hit with the many different weapons you can use, the variety of these weapons, how they visually affect each zombie thanks to an internal system called Flash that the studio developed, representing the different types of damage you can cause, fire, acid, electricity, but also where you cause it. And besides this essential part, the combat works even better because of the different systems the game has and the excellent pace, the choices to when introduce new weapons, new abilities and new types of enemies. Interestingly, I believe part of this is because Dead Island 2 is not an open world game. It is segmented into different zones, famous locations in Los Angeles such as Bel Air, Beverly Hills and Hollywood Boulevard, which are separated by loading screens. These zones are not very large in size, but they are dense filled with secrets, interiors, optional objects and items to collect, an abandoned police station on the beach, an amusement park on a pier overlooking the sea, a hotel that was originally a military safe zone for refugees but now has an acidic pool for special guests, and even the mansion of a famous singer who apparently threw a last party before Los Angeles turned into hell. As you progress and experience this variety, the game also adds cards to your skill deck, divided into talent, survival, zombie hunting, some of these cards you will understand as you progress in the story. But the essential thing here is that with these cards and the ability to upgrade the weapons you find in the game world, hammers, claws, knives and the like, you can shape your character according to the playstyle you want. One of my favorite combos was brass knuckles that had a chance to cause enemies to explode on critical hits. Fun! Even with this deadly combination, it's important to note that Dead Island 2 is not an easy game. The zombies in Los Angeles are many, from the crushers that are huge and resistant and will try to knock you down with their blows, to the screaming zombies that cause damage, limit your movement 
and attract hordes of their fellow zombies to tune on you, and even the crawlers that can end your life with a well-placed strike. That's why your skills are essential for survival, and these skills will depend on your playstyle. I relied on dodging and ground pound that knocked down zombies around me, among other things, but this challenge, with an excellent difficulty curve and the pacing of adding new elements to the game, the bloody equation of its combat, including firearms, is what makes it so much fun from beginning to end. It's funny that if I have one complaint about the pacing and progression of Dead Island 2, it's that it's a little too slow at the beginning, which is the exact opposite of what happened in its predecessor like 12 years ago, which started off strong and became boring towards the end. Dead Island 2 keeps getting better and better, introducing absurd situations into its narrative that blend pulp elements with a zombie land like energy. And this increasing absurdity in the game's moment and direction of its story made me end up enjoying even some of the characters and narrative moments of the game. It embraces this absurdity, and I think that's why it ended up working. Dead Island 2 embraces its limitations. It's not open world, but it knows it doesn't need to be an open world game to be fun. It doesn't have complex skill trees, but that's okay. The absurd weapons offer to you more than make up for it. It's not revolutionary and doesn't do anything groundbreaking within the first person or zombie genre. But that's not a drawback, because it's very, very good at what it does. It's a light-hearted, enjoyable, polished and a very beautiful game. I finished it, but I'm already looking forward to possible expansions coming, to try out the game's co-op mode, which I didn't get a chance to experience, and also to go back to the game and complete the remaining side missions after its conclusion. 2023 has been a year full of exceptional video games, but I have to say, I didn't expect that Island 2 to be the biggest surprise this year so far.